All right, is every, uh, can everybody hear me all right? Yeah, somebody's got an awful loud, lot of background noise. Yeah, if, uh, if whoever is, um, uh, until you're speaking, if you want to put your phone on mute, um, that way everybody can hear everything okay, and then whenever you have a question, just uh, unmute it and feel free to, to chime in. Um, so that way we can uh, try to keep the background noise to a minimum and be able to uh, be able to uh, smooth this uh, smooth this along as quickly as possible, so you guys can get back to your day. But hopefully, be able to uh, enlighten you guys about the program that we built here on the Show Me Benefits platform, and uh, answer any questions that you guys have, and hopefully uh, get you guys excited about going out and selling some public entity uh, stuff this year. So, uh, can everybody see the screen? Okay. <laughs> Very good. I'll just go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Chris Corcoran. Um, I've spoken to most of you guys. I'm with National Insurance Partners. Uh, we have, uh, in conjunction with Mike Keith Insurance, uh, created this platform called the Show Me Benefits. Um, it's a really cool platform. We're really excited about it. And um, you know, we've reached out to you guys in specific to um, be our partners throughout the state of Missouri and having uh, exclusive access to this program uh, for your public entities and hopefully being able to not only keep the business that you guys do have, uh, but hopefully be able to use it to go out and get new business and help you grow your block um, as ways that we can try to uh, bring a solution to uh, some of the public entities in our, in our specific areas. So as we, as we get into this, I will uh, just kind of give you uh, a little bit of background. Um, I've been working with Mike Keith Insurance for a couple of years now, and you know the, the consistent thing is that, that, that kept coming up was you know we, we, we have a need, a, a big need for uh, reaching out to public entities. Um, you know whether it's you know we help them out on the property and casualty side and they ask us about benefits or you know we, we have a, an arrangement with a specific association of uh, public entities and they've asked us about certain things um, but the the common thread is is now that the health care reform has come into effect and everybody's kind of going towards these ACA type of plans how can we be different in the marketplace how can we bring something different to the table and be able to set ourselves apart as we're competing for these businesses and, and public entities um, in, in the market and so uh, about four, four months ago, uh, we really kind of um, dove into the public entity sector a little bit harder um, and, and decided that, you know, hey, I think we have a fit here. Let's, let's look at this a little bit more in depth. And what we eventually came out with was the Show Me Benefits platform. And it's a unique customized program for public entities that includes uh, group major medical, um, ancillary benefits with dental, vision, life. Uh, we're working on a supplemental carrier right now as far as getting approval for that, as well as uh, administrative tools with Section 105, uh, 125s, uh, COBRA administration, uh, cafeteria plans, that sort of thing. So uh, we're really trying to bring everything into one package for these public entities that will not only simplify their lives, but hopefully we'll be able to allow you guys to make a little bit more money um, in packaging multiple different products together. Um, and as we all know, you get two, three, four lines of business with a, with a company or a public entity and the likelihood that they're going to leave you as an agent goes down tremendously. So uh, the, the major thing that we want to talk about today is the major medical piece of it. Uh, obviously that has the most moving parts and is you know, the hottest topic right now. Um, with, with as far as that's concerned. So, you know, we're going to spend the majority of time on that. And once again, the last thing I want to do is just read through PowerPoint. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, chime in. And, you know, as, as I mentioned before, the goal of the Show Me Benefits platform is to create a team collaborative effort in the state of Missouri and, and be able to bounce ideas off of each other um, find out what's working for, you know, another maybe another area in the state, what we can, you know, utilize 
uh, for your particular agency that's going to help you be most successful. Um, but that's why we wanted to get everybody together on the, on the call today to make sure that we can answer questions in a group setting, um, you know, go over any concerns in a group setting, and be able to get um, the information um, given in a group setting. So uh, the main purpose of our lifestyle health program is to bring an integrated wellness and lifestyle improvement program to our, to our groups in order to um, you know, help them address their rising cost of insurance. As we all know, public entities have kind of been a forgotten sector on the benefit side uh, by the carriers, by certain agents. Um, they've kind of gone left by the wayside, and you know, the costs are really high uh, from what we've seen uh, in, in quoting in the marketplace, and we think we have a really good value there. So as I kind of mentioned before, here's all the programs that we have bundled into this. Uh, platform, the lifestyle health program being the major medical component of it, uh, and we'll get into all the details of that. The dental and vision uh, will be brought to you by Emeritus. Um, they have given us about 15 percentage points uh, of a discount uh, by packaging the program together with our lifestyle plan for the show me benefits. Um, and so we'll, we'll be able to offer uh, dental and vision. The dental has uh, a plan that has a network and a plan that has no network, um, and the vision has the VSP network. Life insurance will be uh, through Reliance Standard, and the supplemental program, uh, specifically um, a GAP type of program, uh, we are working with Colonial Life right now on building a, uh, a specialized custom program for the Show Me Benefits Pack as well. Um, through that, we're going to also have COBRA administration on the lifestyle plans, handled at no cost by the third-party administrator. Section 125, uh, cafeteria plans, FSA administration, such like that, we are uh, working on those partners as well to where we're going to be able to bring a full package to uh, the public entities that we work with. <clears throat> uh, why you guys? Um, a lot of the reasons why you guys were identified as uh, key partners and exclusive partners on the Show Me Benefits arrangement is one because of Mike Keith's relationship with you uh, through other arrangements, but but two because of um, your history and uh, success on the public entity field, whether it be on the benefits side or the property and casualty side. Um, also uh, because of your geographical uh, situation. We try to spread everybody out as much as possible so we're not having a lot of overlapping situations when we're, when we're working on uh, these public entities. Um, and, and, and lastly, because um, you know, this is, once again, a differentiating factor we feel for you guys in the marketplace. We can bring something dis different to the table that anybody that you're competing on a piece of business is not going to be able to have access to. So. Um, the key partners that we have there obviously are listed below. We're working on one other one um, to kind of handle the central Missouri area. Um, but uh, we really appreciate your guys' interest, and uh, we really hope that we can do whatever we can through um, national insurance partners and through Mike Keith as kind of the, the gatekeeper on being able to help you guys ride as much business as possible this year. Um, here's kind of a a little map overview of where our partners are spread out. Like I said, we try to spread everybody out um, in the marketplace. Um, the green counties are counties that are already on uh, the uh, lifestyle health program. And so it's going to be a, a nice thing to have a built-in reference point already. Uh, we have currently been quoting about eight others uh, that will be renewing uh, 10 more, or 12-1 um, renewal dates. And obviously, as we roll out the, after this call, uh, we're going to have hopefully a lot more uh, reference points as we get into, um, you know, be able to get into the uh, actual quoting and selling of the business. Any questions so far as far as the Show Me Benefits arrangement, um, you know, the partnership ar uh, arrangement or anything like that? Very good. Um, I will get into the Lifestyle Health Program. Um, I'll kind of skim over the first few slides and then uh, get into the actual benefits of the program and the value adds and everything like that as, as I feel like that's going to be our biggest selling point for this platform. 
Uh, lifestyle health programs uh, was created because of the fact that 75% of all claims dollars today are spent on lifestyle type of conditions, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, you know, smoking type of things. So uh, what, what uh, the third party administrator that created this really sat down and thought, you know, there, there's nothing out there in the marketplace that's really going to address these factors. Uh, most most normal health insurance through uh, the traditional carriers, it just kind of is what it is. Uh, there's not a lot of risk management tools until you get on the large group chassis with, you know, on a traditional self-funded platform. And so this program was created for the small to medium-sized group in mind um, to be able to bring something to the table that the large groups are being able to enjoy. Um, you know, your couple thousand like groups are being able to enjoy but bringing that down to a small group level to where we are not only increasing the benefits for the employees, but we're doing everything possible to have risk management tools uh, built into the platform to be able to have the plan run successfully for multiple years down the road. Um, the biggest difference with this type of platform is um, we're getting outside of some of the healthcare reform regulations with community ratings, and um, ACA taxes um, and such like that. So we're able to have a little bit more flexibility going forward versus the traditional type of uh, ACA community rated plans that are, uh, that are very prevalent now in the market space. Uh, the program was created uh, and implemented by Medova Healthcare. Uh, they are based in Wichita, Kansas. They are the third party administrator for this program and um, have uh, successfully uh, rolled these types of arrangements out in other states uh, through CEOs and associations and things like that. So uh, we have a lot of history with Medova Healthcare on the lifestyle platform. They have a lot of history on these types of customized arrangements uh, in other states, uh, like I said, specifically with PEO uh, type of arrangements. Uh, they've been marketing this program through that arrangement um, since about 2007 and um, have currently written about 25,000 employee lives that are on the books currently. Uh, so it is a program that has grown, has grown pretty quick, uh, and they about a 50% growth every single year in the last three years. Um, the goal of this program is to bring a immediate cost savings to our um, public entities that we work with. Um, obviously, if we're not going to save them money, why are they going to look at us? Uh, but, the, but the overriding goal is that we're trying to bring a long-term solution uh, to the program, uh, to that public entity. Uh, the average uh, life cycle of the groups that have been on the books is about five years as of right now. Uh, so the groups that get on the books stay on the books, and that's a good thing, uh, not only for them, uh, less change and everything like that, but it's a good thing for you guys as the broker as well. Uh, a lot less turmoil, a lot less, uh, you know, uh, turning over of carriers in the marketplace. We do that, and they're able to accomplish that by a few different things that we'll go over in a few slides. But um, you know, we try to do things uh, on incentive-based models. Uh, to be able to get the employees educated, involved, and engaged in the programs in order to not overuse and abuse the health care, uh, you know, the health insurance program. So, um, you know, we really try to, education is a big factor uh, for this type of program for the employees and the employer. Uh, once again, we're, we're bringing a strategic approach to the business. Uh, we're not uh, just selling a rate. We're bringing uh, an overriding, um, you know, in total uh, type of program to uh, the public entity as a way that we can, once again, protect them over the long run. Um, we have uh, virtually all of, the, all, of the, all of the plan designs that are available are at minimum value. So they're going to be, um, you know, outside of the any fines or anything like that. Uh, and then we also have a, a, um, a minimum essential program that we can pair with this to be able to get outside of the $2,000 fine. So uh, we have a lot of flexibility plan design-wise that you'll see. Uh, and being able to be written on uh, an ERISA platform uh, gives us a lot more flexibility going forward in the future. 
as I mentioned, it is written on a fully funded ERISA platform. Uh, essentially what that means is, yes, it is technically self-funded, but no, there is no risk. Uh, every single dollar of spend, both fixed cost and claims cost, is accounted for in your monthly premiums. So you pay your monthly premium as an employer, and that is it. There is no uh, callback for you know, more money if you have a bad claims month. There's no assessment at the end of the year. If you have a really bad uh, year, uh, every dollar of risk is accounted for in your monthly premiums. And so that's a really comforting factor for these public entities because they have budgets. Uh, and they're a little bit uh, more uh, nervous about uh, a traditional type of self-funded plan when they have uh, variable aspects to them. And so being able to bring something to the table that looks, smells, feels like what they're used to on the fully insured basis, um, but being able to bring the value of being written on self-funded paper and some of these value-added benefits to the table, it's kind of a best of both worlds type of scenario for them. Um, every plan does have both a specific and an aggregate stop loss to protect against an individual's large, pers uh, large claims as well as the group's cumulative total of large claims. Uh, so they're protected on both angles there. Um, and then this, this illustration and the wording um, on the next page is on every proposal. Uh, and it really, I think, helps the employer and the, and the county commissioners or the mayors or whoever's making the decisions uh, really understand how this works. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're unbundling your premium cost, and we're taking that number that you're used to paying and showing you where it actually gets spent. Some of it goes to the administrative cost. Um, some of it goes to the stop-loss insurance cost, and a big chunk, chunk of it goes towards your claims fund. Uh, the first two buckets, they're fixed, and once you spend them, they're pretty much gone. The claims fund, however, is potentially refundable if the municipality or public entity has a better than expected year. Um, now we don't try to sell that necessarily as a, the main selling point of, hey, you could probably get a refund back, but what we try to do is we try to use that as a selling point for some of the value added benefits of, hey, if you really preach the wellness component of this, you are going to potentially, you're going to have a better, you know, than expected year which means that your renewal is going to look better next year. Or we can use some of the money saved over to buy down your renewal next year. Or call the telemedicine provider and save money on emergency room visits because now you're going to have a, a better looking claims fund at the end of the year. So um, you know, we really try to use that, um, that factor of the healthier your employees are, the less they spend in claims, the more robust your claims fund is going to be at the end of the year, which means um, which means that um, you know you can have uh, a better than expected type of year. <clears throat> um, and then this wording, of course, like I said, is on every one of our proposals, which really gives some validity versus just us saying, um, you know, here's what here's what it is. Um, you know, basically every dollar of cost, claims runoff, everything like that is already predetermined, and you pay one twelfth of that. Uh, and so at the end of the year, you will have paid your maximum spent, period. There is no additional risk, no additional charges, no additional anything uh, over and above uh, what your monthly premiums are. And so it's a, it's a really comforting thing for some of these public entities to know that, you know, here's my cost, period. Uh, we've kind of already talked about this. Um, like I mentioned, we do have a minimum essential coverage program for groups of over 100 uh, that they can pair with the lifestyle platform, um, that they can kind of encapsulate some of their lower income workers. It's a guaranteed issue uh, plan with no underwriting. Um, I don't know how, um, how beneficial or successful it might be on entity because they're already accounting for a big chunk of premium with budget and everything like that. But it is something that we do have available, and I can answer any questions more in depth about that type of program. <clears throat> so now we're getting into the actual components of the lifestyle program. Uh, the lifestyle plan has 16 plan designs that you will get on every single quote. 
uh, and they're broken out into four different plan families. Every single one of them has a wellness program that is already integrated into the platform uh, that, that brings deductible credits, uh, incentives, and such like that um, for uh, the employees. And the majority of the platform has uh, all the value-added benefits that we'll go over in just a bit. Uh, we only utilize A-rated uh, stop-loss carriers for our uh, reinsurance. So um, having that backing of a, uh, of a highly rated insurance carrier is, is something that's very important uh, whenever you're dealing with a stop loss or a self-funded type of arrangement. Here's a brief snapshot of some of the value-added benefits that we'll go into, like I said, the wellness program, uh, telemedicine, uh, our lab benefit, our diabetic supplies benefit, and then some reward programs for the employees and the employer. So the wellness program uh, is an incentive-based uh, wellness program as a way for employees to not only get engaged in the platform and be healthier, but as a way to lower their deductible and out-of-pocket uh, for their plan. Um, and it's a very simple concept um, that I will uh, you know, go over uh, here pretty quick, but uh, that's, that's basically it in, in a nutshell, is we're really trying to get people educated, involved, and incentivized to participate in their health insurance program versus just over-utilize it, you know, whenever, you know, whenever they need it. Um, you know, actually make smart, conscious decisions uh, on where they're spending their health insurance dollars versus, you know, just running to the ER or something that's not an emergency or, you know, everything like that. Uh, one of the key components of our wellness program is our biometric screenings and online health risk assessment. Um, we do the online health risk assessment through a large national health insurance, or not health insurance, but a wellness health management company called Dossier. Um, they manage our online portals for our employees. Every employee will get access to an online portal for their wellness, as well as be able to check claims and explanation of benefits and everything like that. Uh, but the main purpose of this is to help you um, know your numbers, track progress, and be able to see where you are uh, on deductible credits and everything like that. So it's a really cool platform that every single employee will get access to. We also use some of the information that you provide um, on those wellness platforms to uh, run it against a predictive modeling system called allostatics. Uh, basically what we can do is take that information that you provide and predict large types of conditions five to seven years down the road with a 90% accuracy ratio. Uh, this is integrated and in, in it's an integrated report um, through our wellness portal for every employee uh, to be able to give them an idea of, hey, I'm at risk for a you know, really serious condition uh, upcoming if I don't do anything to change my path. So what we're really trying to do is we're really trying to educate them on here, here's what you're potentially at risk for, here's what we can do to help you out in changing that path to hopefully not, uh, you know, have that large condition come down the pike for you, not only for you as the employee, but also for the employer uh, as, as a claims payer on that employee. So that's a really cool tool. Once again, it's, a, it's implemented and integrated in every one of our uh, programs through our wellness portal. So here's the wellness program in a nutshell. Basically, uh, within the first two months of the effective date, we ask that the employee does a biometric screening and do an online health risk assessment survey within the first 60 days. And if they do those two things, they will earn a $500 credit towards their deductible. So, for instance, if you and the employer chooses a $1,500 deductible, employee John Smith goes out and does those two things within the first 60 days, now his $1,500 deductible becomes 1000 bucks. So that's our way to reward the employees uh, for doing the wellness platform, is to lower their deductibles. So it's a very simple thing for them to do in the first year. Uh, just those two things, and that's it. They get their $500. Now going forward, what we ask is that the uh, employee actually does 
things to participate in the wellness platform. Uh, whether it's a personal challenge, uh, such as you know doing your preventive screenings, your dental screenings, your vision screenings, doing a walking challenge, doing a weight loss challenge, you know anything that you can do personally, exercise wise, or you know lowering your numbers for ne you know, next year's uh, health risk assessment survey, that sort of thing, you're going to get points for uh, that you're going to uh, be able to earn that wellness credit every single year. Uh, now we can also do a corporate challenge uh, with um, with the employer to where they can say, all right, we're going to do a weight loss challenge between the different uh, divisions of the of the municipality, or we we're going to do a an exercise challenge. I mean, we're, we'll work with you to set whatever up, and it can be customized to whatever that you want. Um, one of the school districts that we just uh, wrote for September first. Um, has come out and said, you know, we want to do a walking challenge. So they're going to do something to where uh, the, they have the little pedometers that count the steps. And for you know, if they reach X number of steps in a day or a week, um, they're going to be able to earn um, these uh, wellness points for it. So we can customize them based on each individual group um, on what they want to do to be able to earn the points. Um, but be, but essentially, you earn the points throughout the year and you can earn your $500 deductible credit every single year. Uh, this is applicable for any employee or spouse that is on the plan. So you know if you have an employee spouse coverage, it, they can technically earn $1,000 off their deductible. Now every year after the first year, Madova, the lifestyle program, is actually going to match a percentage of that. Um, every year to where if you do the program for five years and you earn your $500 deductible credit every year for five years, that $500 that you earn now becomes $1,000 off your deductible. So it's a pretty cool way to decrease their deductible, keep them engaged in the program for not just that first year, uh, but keeping them engaged for multiple years down the road. Any questions about the wellness program? Very good. Uh, the second and, and probably the second um, most used program is the telemedicine platform. Our telemedicine is built into every single one of our uh, 16 plane designs on the lifestyle platform. Basically what it allows you to do is utilize our telephonic concierge doctor's um, service 24-7 uh, every day of the year. Uh, it's not like um, you know, ask a nurse or you call and leave a message and the doctor calls you back in two days, you call and you speak with a doctor right away. Uh, and so it's it's really based on concierge type of medicine. It's based on relationship type of things. Um, but the cool thing about it is it's a zero dollar copay for the employee and they can use it unlimited times per year. So it keeps, uh, keeps people out of the emergency room for non-emergency situations. Um, it keeps people um, from missing work, uh, for you know having to schedule doctor's appointments for stuff that they can just handle over the phone, uh, and certain prescriptions can actually be written over the phone uh, by me talking with these doctors. Uh, example I always like to use is one of our groups, uh, the city clerk on on the group. Uh, her daughter has really bad sinus infections twice a year, like clockwork. Uh, her last one, she got a real bad sinus infection, two thirty in the morning. She called out the telemedicine provider. They wrote her a script for a ZPAC, sent it to CVS 24-hour pharmacy. She was able to go pick it up right then and there. Problem solved with the daughter, daughter science infection. Uh, she didn't have to um, try to schedule a doctor's appointment. She didn't have to go to the emergency room or anything like that. Uh, so it saved her money uh, every time um, because she doesn't have to pay anything for it except for the prescriptions if one's written. But it really saves the plan money over the long run because you know you're not run into the emergency room for any you know all the small stuff that maybe not be an emergency. So it's a really cool feature that is built into each one of our plan designs that we've had a lot of people find good use for um, with a telemedicine provider. The next benefit um, that is on most of our plans except for the HSA plans is our direct health lab program. Uh, basically what we're saying is if you go to a LabCorp draw station or have your lab sent by your doctor to LabCorp for processing, 
you will get your labs done at 100% coverage. Uh, and so, you know, we really try to direct people through LabCorp uh, just because they're the ones that have agreed to the massive discounts um, that we needed in order to make this possible. Um, each employee will get a secondary ID card that is lab specific. And that lab specific card will give them instructions on, on what to do you know, whenever they need lab work done. Either order, have the doctor order the lab and go to a lab core facility for the draw station, or, uh, and, and most doctors and hospitals have no problem with this, uh, sending your lab work to LabCorp for processing. So it's a really cool feature. Once again, it's on all the plans except for the HSA plans. Um, same thing with the diabetic supplies. Um, we have uh, a mail order vendor that if you utilize their service, you can get your testing strips, your ma uh, lancets, and your new meters uh, covered at 100%. This is something that you have to enroll on uh, the Just Diabetic Supplies website, um, but every 90 days you will get all of those things or whatever you need sent to directly to your home address. Um, so it's a really cool feature for those diabetics that are on the groups. As we all know, uh, there, there's a lot of them out there. Um, so if we can bring something to the table for them that they can save money on, uh, it's going to help them out, it's going to help the plan out, and everything like that. So once again, not available on the HSA plans, but is available on the other 12. Chris, so I have a question uh, about that. Yep. Can I ask? Um, I've got a couple of people that have asked me about this, this plan. So that's great. They get the supplies. What about the insulin? Because there's a concern with the non-inject or self-injectables not being covered. How, are, how is the insulin covered? Insulin is still covered um, as a... Uh, that's the only self-injectable that's automatically covered. Um, and it's covered underneath that fourth tier of drugs. So it is it is a covered uh, drug. So or it's not covered on the fourth tier. It's covered whatever tier that insulin is, is covered on. Um, we would just have to verify what the, what that particular type of insulin is and what tier it falls into on the, on the prescription side. Um, so the insulin is not a diabetic supply. Right, but so they would still pick that up at their normal That's pharmacy correct. that they use. There's no shipping uh, available through the diabetic company. Okay, Thank you, you got it, Chris. I have an, yes. I have a couple questions. This is Jeannie with My Keep Insurance, and I kind of want to track back to the lab if we could. Is LabCorp the only lab that's um, utilized, or is there another lab that will pay uh, that can be paid at 100 percent? Yeah, as of this point, LabCorp is the, the, the partner lab that we utilize on this one. So okay. um, that's, that's the only one that has agreed to the discount that we needed in order to make it possible. Um, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's the main lab for us. Okay. Um, then the other thing, um, the information that you've revealed on the lab, um, on the diabetic, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. On the uh, diabetic supplies, uh, where where does the employee or the insured find all that information after the the group has signed up with Lifestyle? Sure, um, all of all of these uh, different flyers that you're seeing here, kind of on the side of the screen, those all come in the employee's enrollment packet. Uh, so, and it, I'm, I'm not and if you guys can mute when, when you're not on. Yeah, and I thought it was here. Hello? Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, so all of this information... all these little flyers here, they all come in the employee's enrollment package. And so when they get their card, uh, 
when they get their cards and everything like that, all of that information will be in their enrollment packet. Uh, and then all, all obviously like I will supply each of you with PDFs of every single one of our marketing pieces um, for uh, all of these value-added programs and everything like that. So you can familiarize yourself with them and you can use them in your sales presentation. I think we got that, Chris. Maybe. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I appreciate I think, that. Thank you very much. Yep, no problem. Okay. So the Life Rewards program is, is a newer thing um, as of this summer, but basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to reward people for making smart consumer type of decisions with their health care uh, dollars. Uh, basically, if they do one of these things that's going to save the plan money over the long run, we're going to pay them um, a gift card uh, for doing such. Uh, the most common one that we've seen is um, the brand name drug to generic conversion. So if we're saving, uh, if you have a brand name that costs over $100 and you switch to a generic drug, we're going to pay you $50 as a one-time um, thank you for doing that because you just saved the plan a bunch of money every month. Um, calling ahead for surgery coordination to our, um, to our concierge uh, team that can help you find the best um, facility to do your surgery and we're going to pay you money for that. Uh, calling the telemedicine provider and avoiding an unnecessary emergency room visit. We're going to pay you cash for that. So all these different types of things we're trying to educate or you know we're trying to incentivize the employee to actually you know pay attention to what they're what they're spending on the healthcare side. So um, that's a pretty important you know cool new thing that we've uh, just implemented as of June. Uh, and then this program I don't know how popular it's going to be on the public entity sector, but we do have the ability to do an incentive program for them for non-wellness type of situations. So if they have to do worksite safety trainings or performance productivity, stuff like that, and they want to reward their employees for such, uh, we can manage their platform for them, do all the administrative side of it, and then all they would have to do is fund uh, the gift card amount that they want to do. So they want to say, if you work, if you miss zero days of work in a quarter, we're going to give you a twenty-five dollar gift card. That's very easy for us. You know, we just do the tracking and administrative of it, and all they have to do is fund the twenty-five dollar gift card for any employee that that reaches that goal. Any any questions about the value added benefits with the wellness, telemedicine, lab, diabetic, or life rewards program? Very good. Okay. Um, now we're going to get into the actual ma major medical plan designs. Uh, like I mentioned before, we have 16 plan designs, four plan families. You're going to get all 16 options on every quote that you get from us. Uh, the healthy choice plans are your traditional 80-20 plans, co-pays, prescriptions, etc. Uh, the healthy 100 plans are a little bit higher deductibles, but 100% coinsurance. They still have all of the uh, co-pays, prescriptions, everything like that. Those, uh, to be frank with you, are our most popular and most commonly sold plans. Uh, the healthy value plans are a little bit more cost conscious type of programs, and the healthy consumer plans are your HSA plans. Um, you can offer multiple different plan designs based on the size of the group, um, and you can see there. So five to nine, you can offer two uh, plans, 10 to 25, you can offer three plans, and 26 plus, you can offer four plans. So you have a lot of flexibility on how many plans that you want to offer to that municipality or, or public entity. Um, the cool thing is, is it doesn't matter what kind of spread you have between the different plans. It doesn't matter if you take either of the plans or, or anything like that. You have basically complete flexibility on which of which of the 16 plan designs you want to offer for that particular uh, public entity. Um, so here's the healthy choice plans in a nutshell. Um, they have a little bit lower deductibles, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. And remember, each of those plans can be lowered by $500 by doing the wellness program. So the 1,000 becomes a 500, et cetera, et cetera. They're all at 80-20 coinsurance to an additional $2,500 out of pocket. <clears throat> they have office visit copays for primary care and specialist, copays for urgent care and emergency room, 
and they have a prescription copays as well, um, the different tiers for that. Uh, the preferred network is going to encapsulate probably 85% of the pharmacies in your areas that you deal with. All the big houses are in the preferred network, and the majority of the normal pharmacies are in there. Uh, the standard network is kind of our back, backup network for more of the mom and pop shop type of um, uh, you know, pharmacies. Um, I, I always give the example of when people ask me about how's the prescription network. Um, Clark County, furthest northeast county in Missouri, very rural on the board of Iowa, Illinois. Um, every pharmacy in their little town, Cuyahoga, was covered in the preferred network. So I, I always use that as my example. If, if their network, you know, if their network is good enough up there, it's good enough for for just about uh, anywhere else that we're looking at. Uh, while we're on pharmacy piece of this, um, I want to give you guys a, a heads up on what we have found as the only potential stumbling block that I've seen. Uh, and that is where it comes to what drugs are potentially excluded um, under the prescription uh, program and why they have been chosen to be excluded. Um, Self-injectables, uh, excluding diabetic stuff in a list of about 15 or 16 different um, high cost newer type of drugs are excluded on this plan on a traditional program. Um, we have the capability of writing a specific drug into the plan document if it absolutely needs to be covered. Uh, but the reason why we have excluded those, plan, uh, those drugs on the plan document is because we have found that traditionally employees are able to go out directly to the manufacturer and get that drug for a significantly discounted cost, but only if the plan document says that it is a not covered drug. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, the drug Tessafidera was taken for um, MS. It's a pill for MS. It cost about $3,000 a month. Uh, that the employee would have to pay up to their deductible, and then the plan would have to pay ad infinitum. Um, so that's a really big expenditure for the employee. It's a really, really big expenditure for the plan. Uh, but what we did, by that drug being written as an excluded drug on the plan document, that employee was able to go out directly to the manufacturer and get that drug for $10 a month. So she saved money, she was happy, plan saved money, they were happy, uh, and everything you know, worked out very well in the end. Um, so essentially what we have are three options whenever we have a drug that is an excluded drug. One, we write it into the plan document, we rate for it, and we rate in medically uh, underwriting if anybody's taking that drug specifically. Um, Two, we ex keep the drug excluded and we advise them to go through the manufacturer to get the manufacturer's discounts, which are tremendous uh, discounts. Or three is we educate them on ways that they can uh, take the individual ACA plans, go on a spouse's coverage, et cetera, et cetera, as ways that they can keep their drug as a covered uh, cost. Um, the way that we kind of do a little pre-work on this is when they complete their applications, underwriting, when they come back with firm rates, will say uh, drug XYZ is an excluded drug on this contract, um, you know, to give us the heads up. Then I communicate that with you. Then we work with the employer and the employee on deciding what we want to do. Um, and then, so we try to do all that up front before it becomes a claims issue. Um, on a group that's already implemented, uh, we do ask that the employee, when they come on board, uh, complete a health statement. Um, that employee will not be underwritten at that time, obviously because the group is already in force, but what it will allow us to do, it will allow us to keep our, um, you know, keep our eyes on the drugs that are being taken to be able to, you know, know that, hey, this new hire potentially is taking is a, taking a drug that's going to be an excluded drug. Let's talk to them and see what our options are about about handling that. So that's, to be honest with you, after almost two years of, of working with the lifestyle program, 
that's really the only red flag or stumbling block or hurdle or whatever you want to call it that I've run into. Um, and it, it's not something that comes up very often. Um, I would say it's only come up probably about five times total uh, in two years uh, for me personally. Um, so it's not a very uh, super common thing, but it is something that we have to be aware of as we're going out there and talking to these uh, groups. Because the last thing that you want to do is not mention it and then it becomes an issue. But like I said, we have checks and balances systems through underwriting, through me, through everything to make sure that we try to catch that uh, as we're going through the preliminary underwriting on the group uh, to make sure that we're catching any uh, potential issues before they become issues. Any questions about that? I have a, just a comment, Chris. Sure. If you um, if your agency uses Easy Apps, it's real simple to run. Once everyone's entered that information in, it's pretty simple to run that drug report, and it's fairly easy to check that out and make sure that you know you've not got something in the group that's going to cause trouble later. Yeah, form fire as well. Um, you know, both of those things can you can pull off. The RX report pretty simply, and and be able to just glance over it and say, all right, you know everything's good. As a way, once again, to add one more layer of the checks and balances. Any other comments about the prescription issue? All right. Okay, so as I mentioned here, um, all of our value-added benefits are on the Healthy Choice Plan. So they're already integrated into the cost and everything like that. So you don't have to worry about saying, oh, it's going to be an additional three bucks a month for the telemedicine or anything like that. When you get the rates, it's already going to be accounted for. The Healthy 100, once again, uh, my opinion is our most popular, most sold plans. 100% um, options after the deductibles met. All of the copay all of the copays um, are still applicable here with the primary care specialist urgent care and ER. All of those deductibles can be lowered by $500, but in the long still the same prescription um, options as well. Once again, all the value-added benefits are already integrated into the cost for this one as well. The healthy value programs are um, a little bit more cost-efficient. Uh, the 2500 and 3500 are 50-50 coinsurance. Um, the 6350 and the 10000 are 100% um, options. If you're looking to do a minimum value plan as you know the bronze level actuarial value, uh, the 6350 healthy value will be the lowest option that you can do for the um, minimum value plan. The 10,000 is available, but it will not qualify for the minimum value unless you do an HRA or a GAP program to buy that $10,000 deductible down uh, to um, an applicable level for the employees. All of them still have the primary care specialist, urgent care, and ER, as well as the prescription cards. They also have all of the value-added benefits available to them as well. The HSA are the healthy consumer plans. Um, you have your four deductible levels there, all 100% coinsurance. They are all embedded deductibles, which I know is a very um, you know, commonly asked question on that. Um, there are office visits for primary care and specialists that kick in after the deductible, which I don't like, but you know it is what it is. Uh, everything else is covered at 100% after the deductible is met. And then once again, as we kind of talked about before, the only things that are not available on the consumer plans are your lab benefit and your diabetic supplies since you cannot have first dollar benefits on an HSA. Um, as I mentioned, we have a new Healthy Essentials Minimum Essential Coverage Program uh, available for groups that have over 100 employees or more. Uh, it's designed to pair with a lifestyle program to alleviate both the $2,000 and the $3,000 fines that they could potentially be um, accessible on. Um, so what we've had a lot of groups do is offer this uh, Healthy Essentials Program in conjunction with our minimum value, healthy value, 6350, uh, as a way to alleviate any of the fines, and then you know have the buy-up options for the employees that actually want the major medical options um, for that as well. The difference between our 
MEC program and most of them out in the marketplace is that last point there. We integrate our telemedicine provider, um, the same as the medical, onto the Healthy Essentials platform. We also give them access to a discount program for lab services, dental services, all these other things that I cover. We give them access for like coupons and stuff like that to get services done. And we also enroll them with the PHCS network. So uh, a common thing that people always ask, you know, what if I have to have a surgery? Well, the surgery is covered by the plan, but if they go to a PHCS provider, they're going to get the PHCS network discounts for that. So it's a nice thing to have uh, for those people that maybe can't afford a full major medical type of program, you know, because it is uh, quite a bit cheaper. Uh, it's only about $50 a month. Um, it is a guaranteed issue, uh, no underwriting, um, and then you do get the telemedicine discounts through Direct Health and uh, PHCS network discounts as well. So it's a, it's not, it's not going to be um, probably your most commonly sold plan, but it is nice to have in your back pocket in case you do ever run across those groups that maybe are just really struggling cost-wise. Uh, you know, we've run into those public entities before to where they need to change from a $1,000 deductible to something higher, but, you know, maybe all those people don't necessarily want that coverage and, you know, all sorts of things we have access to do with this type of program. <clears throat> now, this is more administrative stuff. Um, for preliminary rates, I just need, um, you know, group information census, current plan design, and current or renewal rates uh, in order to run your preliminary numbers. For uh, firm rates, uh, for groups of under 100, we do require medical statements uh, for the employees. For groups of over 100, we can underwrite off of claims data uh, if available. If not available, um, then we will require medical statements. Um, basically, all this says is send it to me <laughs> and I'll take care of uh, processing it. Um, the minimum participation that we require is 50% of the eligible full-timers um, in that if we do pair that with a with a MEC program, that can be spread across both the lifestyle and the minimum essential coverage program. Uh, sold case information, once again, send it to me. Uh, we like to have everything in uh, uh, to underwriting by the 25th of the month. So we can try to turn it, turn the cards around as quickly as possible. Um, the uh, employer application, um, the enrollment forms, a disclosure if that's something that um, you know we need to have done. Uh, that's only applicable in certain size groups. But then the signed uh, proposal, uh, electing which plan designs that they want to offer, are really the only three things that we really need to submit the group. We like to have a cop binder check if possible as a way to bind the coverage. So um, if that's something, especially if they're only offering one plan, it's very easy to calculate. Uh, if they're all offering multiple plan designs and we don't know who's going to take which plan, then um, we can, you know, just kind of give it the best guess on um, what the what the binder check should be cut out for. Uh, we do offer deductible credits uh, for those groups that are moving uh, mid-year off January 1st. Um, you know, for anything that they've met currently in the calendar year, we will credit it towards the new lifestyle benefits. Um, so that's a nice thing for that. And then, like I said, the binder check um, we can we can do as well. Um, every proposal will have a um, and actually I can just uh, bring it up real quick what the proposal will actually look like, but all of the proposals will have the reinsurance fees already um, shown on there. So you can basically talk to your employee employers when you're talking to them. If, you know, you're getting outside of a, a big chunk of the premium taxes, but the reinsurance fees are something that's still going to be applicable uh, to um, you know to the to the program. So uh, on the proposal. Um, you will see, here's a, an example of what a proposal will look like for you. Um, you'll have, um, you know, your group name, your agency name, the effective date, all 16 of the plan designs and the rates for all 16 plans. And then down at the bottom, you will have what the Southwest carrier is, what the network that we chose is, 
and then the reinsurance P packet fees uh, for that group uh, that are, are broken out. The PCORI fees are something that the TPA cannot collect and pay for you, so that's something that you definitely have to make sure that they they know that they are going to have to pay um, in uh, July of every year, I believe it is. Um, Network-wise, we have access in Missouri to First Health, which is Coventry's rental network. We have PHCS, which is a national network. We have the HealthLink PPO network. And down in southwest kind of central Missouri, we have the Cox Health Network. So um, what we always recommend is if you're going to sell HealthLink PPO or the Cox Health Network, is that we pair it with a wrapped network of either First Health or PHCS. That way, specifically with Cox, because they only service so many counties, um, that way if you, they are outside of their service range, they're still going to have access to uh, in-network providers through their wrapped network. So those are the four networks that we're going to have to quote. Uh, traditionally, if you tell me, if you don't tell me uh, what network you want to quote, First Health will most likely be the network that I quote first as a default network. Um, but all the networks are the same cost, really. Um, so all we have to do is just you know go back and say, hey, update this with First Health or with HealthLink, and then I can do that and everything like that. So if we do a wrapped network, it does add about one to two percent to the cost. So just keep that in mind. But it's better than you know going. You know, having a Cox Health group, you know, need service done in St. Louis, and there's not a Cox Health provider or something in the area, and not being able to, not being able to get in-network benefits for that. So, so that's a uh, that's the network uh, side of things. That's the PPAC or reinsurance fee side. Like I said, here's what the rate sheet was going to look like. Um, you know, the proposal is pretty um, pretty basic. It's going to have the group information. It's going to have you know, what is the lifestyle plan, how is it different, here's some of the added, added features, you know, here's, you know, what what is a fully funded ERISA plan, you know, here's that diagram that I talked to you guys about. Um, it's going to have the plan overview uh, of the four plan families, and then it's going to have, you know, each of the, of the benefits of all 16 plans. So it's going to have your healthy choice, healthy 100, Healthy value and healthy consumer plans. So it's a pretty it's a pretty easy proposal to read, um, you know. But it's just something that um, you know we're we're really excited about the the Show Me Benefits platform and being able to to bring something of value to these public entities that you know I don't think they really had the opportunity to to bring uh, to the table before. Um, the last thing I want to mention is what you know. The show me benefits. What what am I getting out of it versus writing directly with lifestyle on a, on a public entity? Um, the main thing that we're going to get is we are getting um, aggregated discounts by the stop loss carrier on the stop loss insurance rates. So our rates are going to be about four to five percent cheaper than a traditional you know business or you know anything like that. So we, we were able to get stop loss uh, discounted rates on that side. Uh, we're also going to be able to do a consolidated bill for all of our um, ancillary programs. So if we offer dental vision life uh, to the group, they're going to have to only complete one election form and uh, the bill will have all of the coverages on one bill so the employer will only have to write one check. Uh, for any of their coverages. So that's a really nice thing. Um, this, the last thing is, um, you know, you, you've probably maybe heard of, you know, captive type of arrangements um, and such like that. I love captive type of arrangements, but um, this is a little bit different in the fact that each individual group is going to be individually written and medically underwritten. So um, I, although we are doing this on kind of a corporate large scale program for the you know for the entire state public entities each individual group is going to have their own rates their own plan designs their own network and everything like that um, so it's going to be really nice for um, for tracking you know who's who's running well who's running not so well that sort of thing but 
it really gets outside of adverse selection because now the healthier groups are not going to be penalized by having an unhealthy group in the in the program. So it's going to work a little bit different than the traditional type of pooled risk programs like an NPR or something like that to where everybody's kind of lumped in the same pool. Uh, we are able to share some of the risk between, you know, between the programs, but uh, we're going to have you know, be able to get outside of some of that adverse selection type of situation uh, because the groups are going to be traditionally, you know, rated and renewed based on their demographics and their experience and everything like that. So, um, yes, they are sharing a little bit of the, of the risk by being in this program, but uh, they're, they're experiencing a lot of the benefits by, um, you know, by being able to maintain an individual group um, you know level I guess you can say um, so that's kind of the cool thing there we're, we're, we're gonna you know be able to bring a, a specific platform to any public entity in Missouri county city ambulance district fire district um, that sort of thing public water district um, you know to be able to bring this program to the table the hope is is that we can get a lot of lives on the books, which will give us a little bit more uh, leverage with this top loss carrier to be able to um, have lower renewals for the entire block in future years. Um, and I can tell you the groups that we've had on the books with other uh, arrangements like this with PEOs and associations, they traditionally run very, very well with single digit rate increases every year because they're spreading you know, they're, they're actually treating it like a block on the stop loss carrier side versus an individual group. So um, it is, it's a very cool arrangement and we're very happy to partner with you guys uh, and bring this to the, the groups that you are currently working with as well as the, um, the groups that hopefully you can go out and win from the brokers who aren't forward thinking and not, not looking to do anything different. Is there any other questions or anything like that that we can um, that we can address? Like I said before, you know, our our whole goal with these webinars that you know I like to do, you know, once every five six weeks up front, you know, is to just bounce ideas off of each other, um, you know, talk about what's working, what's not working, what are the hurdles that we have to overcome. Uh, you guys are the experts as far as selling to public entities. My role is to provide you with every tool possible um, in order to help you be as successful as possible. So, you know, if you guys have things that are working for you, um, you know, feel free to share with the team because we, we really, this is a collaborative effort. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping that once Colonial signs off, you know, we're going to have a really cool bridge program that's been really successful up in Northwest Missouri, um, and a lot of we we have it's going to be specific for public entities to where they can you know have a little bit more flexibility to raise their deductible up a little bit, but be able to buy it down with a bridge program. And we're like I said, we're having a lot of success up there with one of our partners up in Northwest Missouri. So you know those those are the types of things that you know maybe somebody down in the boot hill hasn't thought about doing that, and so you know we want to make sure that everybody's everybody's efforts are uh, collaborative and everybody's ideas kind of get bounced off of everything and you know we want to make sure that all of us are as successful as possible in this in the show me benefits endeavor and anything that we can do um, you know the, anything that we can do to help um, you know make you as successful as possible we, we will definitely do that whether it's marketing materials whether it's helping out on, on calls, whether it's, you know, going out and, and, you know, helping with enrollments to explain the program the first couple times, you know, we have, we have, um, you know, myself, uh, we have potentially another gal over on the eastern side of the state that's going to, that's going to help out with us um, on this. So, you know, whatever we can do to help out, you know, feel free to reach out to myself, uh, reach out to Mike, uh, Mike Keith at Mike Keith uh, Insurance, and you know we'll we'll do whatever we can to to make sure that you guys are as set up as possible. Chris, I got a couple questions. Yep. Um, you said that the your stop loss carriers are aggregating over the book, um, but then you also said that 
you know, you're using multiple stop loss carriers, mm -hmm. it, it seems like those are kind of counter to each other. Contradictory. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. And you know, yeah. who you are lose, using for stop loss carriers, you know, who's your primary? Is there a backup? Is it, you know, you got them ranked or how do you do that? Yeah, so our our primary one that we've used on these types of arrangements is a company called ANLI, which is American National Life. Um, they they've been our main carrier for these types of arrangements in the past. Um, as a secondary carrier, we also have uh, Westco, um, which I think just went through a name change. That's called um, National Health Insurance, which is a dumb name, but you know what can you do? <laughs> um, so Westco is kind of our backup um, one, and the third one that we really don't use that often uh, is Fidelity uh, Life here in Kansas City as kind of our third one. So those are the three carriers that we use. Um, ANLI will probably be uh, the most prominent carrier that you'll see. Um, but on some of the bigger groups, you know, 75, 80, 90 employees, uh, Westco might come in a little bit more competitive um, on that. And they've both agreed based on um, the program that we're bringing to the table of they know they're, they're going to get their fair share of the program. So they've both agreed to the aggregating factors on that. So um, the other thing I was going to ask is two to 500, so you're really not poised to do stuff over 500? We, we can. Um, they just wrote a group in Ohio that was about 875 lives. So we, we can do that. Um, what I've traditionally seen is those larger groups tend to, you know, kind of go towards more of the traditional self-funding route. Uh, but uh, we really can accommodate that for sure. Gotcha. What about compensation? We've uh, the compensation is uh, $25 per employee per month, uh, and that's not a decreasing factor or anything like that. Uh, it's As long as the group's on the books, it's going to be $25 PEPM, uh, and then we are actually working on building um, an incentive structure that's going to be um, specific to the show-me benefits. Once we get to a certain live level or anything like that, we'll be able to bump that up a little bit. Um, you do have the capability if we have a little bit of room, you know, after underwriting to say, you know, let's add another five bucks to the PEPM. You know, we can do that. Um, but if if we don't tell me anything, uh, the standard uh, is going to be twenty five dollars PEPM. Any other questions out there? One thing that I uh, one one thing that I would like to do is if each of your guys' offices can send me um, your all's logo in a in a JPEG or something like that full file um, and the contact information that you want to put on the marketing pieces, whether it's, you know, a generic email address for your agency or an agent specific or anything like that, I will create, um, these marketing pieces for your specific agency and, uh, you know, put your all's logo on here, put your all's contact information on here, and it just will allow you, you know, a quick little mailer or, a uh, email blast or anything like that, uh, just going out and saying, you know, here's, here's what we're doing, that's going to help you out, call us for more information, basically. And, um, and you know, it's something that, you know, we've, we've had some success with so far uh, in sending out to public entities, but I want to make sure that we can brand um, all of these marketing pieces that we have. Um, brand them for each individual um, agency that we're working with. So if you can have somebody in your office, just send me over um, a logo and uh, the contact information for your agency that you want to put on here, then I can go ahead and, and put everything together on this um, on this marketing piece and send that out to everybody. Uh, we also have a frequently asked questions um, page about the lifestyle program um, that's branded for Show Me Benefits. Uh, that could hopefully be um, helpful for you guys as you're out talking to um, to public entities. And then, like I said, I will send, uh, if you could send me the key contact person at the agency, I will send 
the PowerPoint that we went through today, as well as all of our marketing PDF, you know, flyers and everything like that for the lifestyle program, the value added benefits, etc. Um, I will send that out to everybody, so you'll have PDFs of of everything that I have. Um, you know, because like I said, my my goal is to make you guys as successful as possible in training and educating and, and assisting in any way possible. So. Um, Anything else? Very good. Well, if anybody has um, questions, um, you guys all have my contact information, phone number, email. Uh, send me a, uh, send me an email. Give me a call. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out and uh, get you all squared away. If you do have uh, quotes that you're starting to work on for the fourth quarter, uh, shoot them over, and we can get turned around for you pretty quickly. And uh, let's uh, let's take over the state here and and see what we can do to uh, you know to help some of these public entities out as uh, as they're starting to really struggle. I think uh, as these ACA uh, rates and everything like that are coming out. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I'll uh, I'll hope to talk to you uh, talk to you shortly. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.